Okay, so we're going to talk about lung ultrasound in our small animal veterinary patients. And when we do our lung ultrasound, essentially what we're looking for is pathology in the lung and the pleural space. So we, the TFAST, or fast examination of the thorax and the fast examination of the abdomen, we were looking for other pathology. When we do the lung ultrasound, we really are looking at the pleural space in the lung. So the lung ultrasound, there's a couple of different ways this can be done that's reported in the veterinary literature. We can do a regional lung scan, and this has been termed the vet blue scan. But this is essentially looking at four different regions of the lung on each side of the chest. So we're going to look at a caudal dorsal area, we're going to look for a glide sign, and we're going to look for interstitial alveolar pathology represented by B lines. We're going to move the probe down to a perihilar region, so it's the middle lung lobe regions. And then we're going to look at the region cranial to the heart and the cranial ventral lung lesions. And we're going to look caudal, so the caudal ventral lung lesions. And so that's four sites that we're going to look at on either side of the chest with the vet blue type of an examination or regional lung scan. The other thing that can be done is we can place the probe between the ribs and we can do a sliding lung ultrasound where we remove the probe ventrally and dorsally between the ribs. Again, checking first for a glide sign and then looking for interstitial alveolar pathology as we move up and down the ribs. Whatever we do on one side of the chest, we're going to repeat on the other side of the chest. Okay, so the first site when we do the lung ultrasound, this is very similar to the chest tube site of the FAST exam of the thorax. We essentially find the subxiphoid ventrally and move our finger dorsally, or we'll count forward to approximately the ninth intercostal space. Once we've localized that area, we're going to apply alcohol after parting the fur, make sure the marker is towards the head of the patient, and again, similar to when we did the FAST examination of the thorax, we're going to orientate the probe so that our probe is perpendicular to the ribs. We're going to adjust our depth to roughly six centimeters. And what we're going to do that is we're going to try and pick up our landmarks. And essentially what we're looking for is the ribs with the rib shadowing, as we can see here. And that white line, that first white line after we find the rib shadows and the margins of the ribs, is going to be our parietal pleural interface. So just similar to uh, the fast exam of the thorax, what we're going to be looking for is that parietal pleural line, and we're going to look for shimmering. So in the cranial field here, we can see a bit of back and forth motion cranial to the rib. In the middle, we see that the lungs and the pleural parietal line are pretty white. So essentially, we're looking for the presence or absence of pneumothorax at this site, and we're looking for those vertical white lines representative of interstitial alveolar pathology, commonly termed B lines, or in some cases, lung rockets. So we'll scan this site first. If we don't see pneumothorax here, we get a glide sign and no B lines, then we're gonna to move to the next site, and that's gonna be by moving the probe down. And in this situation, we're gonna put a little more alcohol in the perihilar region. We can come down. Essentially what we can do is we can find movement to represent the heart, and then we're just gonna move the probe dorsal to the heart, and again, we're going to look at this site. If we have a glide sign dorsally, the odds are there's a glide sign here, so we don't need to look for the glide sign or pneumothorax per se, because we've already ruled out pneumothorax caudal dorsally, but we can look for the presence of B lines. So again, we can move the probe around at, a, at this site, moving a little cranially, moving a little ventrally dorsally, and just look for the presence of that vertical white line representative of a B line. So that's our perihilar site. That's the second region we're going to look at for the lung. Then we're going to move more down ventrally. We're going to come cranial to the heart. So again, we'll localize the heart in our image. So here we can see the heart here uh, in our view. So we're just going to move cranial to that and a little dorsally. And again, we're going to look at this area here. We can see the parietal pleural interface. We can see the glide sign there. And at this site, we just want to make sure that we don't have any B lines. So we can move the probe around a little bit, caudally and ventrally, uh, dorsally and ventrally, cranial and caudally, looking for the presence of B lines or the presence of pleural effusion. Once that's done, again, we'll come back to the heart. That's sort of our landmark place to start from. And once we've got the heart in our view, what we can do at this site here is we'll localize the heart. We'll then move it a little bit caudal. Again, looking between the diaphragm, which we can see in the caudal field here as a curtain sign moving in and out of view. And we're going to look again at the parietal pleural interface for the presence of pleural effusion, as well as the presence of interstitial alveolar disease represented by B lines, which we don't see in this particular patient. Once we've completed those four regional sites on one side, we'll do the same four sites on the other side. An alternative to a regionally based exam is to simply apply alcohol to the side of our patient. 
and as we talked about, we can do a more comprehensive intercostal evaluation of the lung by first starting at the caudal dorsal site. And then again, we're going to find at the site caudal dorsal, we're going to find that curtain sign where the diaphragm is moving in out of view. And then we know just cranial of that is where our lungs are. And once we've localized that area, we can actually slide the probe down between the ribs, looking for the presence of bee lines. And then as we get ventral, we can look for pleural effusion. And then we can move our cranially, slide the probe dorsally, again, looking for the presence of bee lines, move cranially, slide ventrally. So basically we're doing a back and forth pattern along our thorax, moving between the ribs, making sure we cover all regions of the lung to detect the presence of pleural effusion ventrally and B lines or interstitial alveolar disease, both ventrally and caudally. And we'll repeat that on the other side of the chest as well.